you got you chose to focus on leadership. I'm, I'm uh, this had this is such so widely applicable, right? I mean, I I could have an entire conversation today just on the treatment of PTSD, you know, trauma survivors. Mm-hmm and how important and necessary this is a key component of an effective treatment, but you chose a different route. You chose to focus on leaders. Tell Mm -hmm. me why. Yeah, well, we felt that in the current resources out in the world, from an embodiment perspective, a lot of the focus in books coming out is on healing trauma using somatic practices to understand trauma in a different way. And many of the big players in the game, I'm thinking like Gabor Mate, for example, like people, it's it's kind of like going in deep. And we felt like there needed to be a more accessible entry point into embodiment. And at least in, in my work, I see that people can lead only as far as their trauma lets them in a way, or only as far as their bodies limit them. And there's an application, you know, bringing embodiment into leadership spaces. We are speaking to a more well person, although that's subjective, I suppose. And we just felt that, you know, we were witnessing in the world what's normalized in leadership spaces is kind of a low bar. And if we bring what we knew about embodiment and, you know, really early on in the process, these six pillars came to us and they became this framework for really applying the wisdom of embodiment into a space where we feel like it could make an impact. You know, if we had more leaders who could drop into their hearts or feel their emotions or understood how to connect with teammates in a more authentic way, how might that change how we show up for each other? Maybe in a polarized, divisive world, it could create a type of leadership that's a bit more connected. And that could be really useful right now. And little did we know when we first sort of like pitched that idea to each other that we would see firsthand, like through 2020, 2021, 2022, we're in 2023 right now. It felt like as we lived through those years, it became even more important for leaders to have these types of skills and awarenesses to elevate their consciousness so that they're not just heads on sticks walking around with this wisdom I'm, I'm realizing it's a podcast, so I'm pointing to my head, this heady wisdom, and actually embracing the wholeness of body consciousness as well, to just be more thoughtful and more aware in how we lead. So this is very aspirational. My, my concern is sometimes the personality structure of somebody who is, seeks out positions of high authority in government and industry. Um, I think there's some fairly good research in our field, Julie, that they tend to have more sociopathic tendencies. And we certainly see how that has influenced society. Um, I do believe from a spiritual perspective that, um, you know, we could raise the collective consciousness of, you know, if there's really good people who care about each other and do things for the best of society that we can, you know, kind of advance our, our, our culture, but we're at a bad spot, aren't we? You know, and I think we can blame it a lot on our leaders. Mm-hmm. It's around this idea of like frequency and, and energy. Um, do you believe that there are people amongst us who have been able to tap into a higher frequency or a different frequency that connects with a a wisdom and a divine spiritual connection. And they have skills and abilities that maybe we have, maybe all people have the ability to kind of evolve that way, but most people don't. But do you think there are people walk, walk amongst us who have these really advanced kind of talents or skills? Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Because when I say these things, some people think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. I was on a Canadian podcast last night where I was talking about my spiritual kind of connections. And I'm, you know, a little bit afraid of saying kind of these things for the for the first time. But like, 
I've uh, met. I was just going to say, Roger, I think you're one of them. I, I think you might be one of them. I think Julie might be one of them. I think I might be one of them. I think Kel might. I, I We haven't had an, as much interaction, but I don't think it's unusual for us to be able to access a different part of our awareness. So I, I agree, like, I'm intuitive. I, th- I I think I'm intuitive and I think I can enhance my ability to harness my, my intuition. And it first started with an awareness that that's what I'm feeling. So mm-hmm. if I wasn't ever aware of, of the feeling. So I met with a, a, a medium, a very special woman. I mean, she's amazing. And she told me that I have to be careful. I take on a lot of the energy of my clients and that I have to use these techniques and this approach to be able to manage my work because I will consume that energy. She also said there's other things I, you know, I can do around being able to protect myself and I try to do those things. But the more that I become aware of my emotional state, my physical sensations, what's going on with my body, I do experience, Casey, exactly what you said, the answers come to me. So get, I found a way to get out of my own way. Mm-hmm. And I think the what needs to happen is we have to teach people to be able to do that. And I feel like I've been able to catch on to other frequencies. Like, so maybe that's the only way, maybe we're talking here today only because of that, right? Like I would have never been able to connect with the two of you unless we are on a similar frequency. And so a number of things are happening in my life that are unexplainable, but mm-hmm. I think it's because I tapped into that. Mm. Yeah. I just want to say that as you speak, I, I, you know, same wavelength, it's, it's real. I feel in my body as you speak the, what I called earlier, the truth tears, these like tears at the backs of my eyes. I feel my heart space connect. It's like a, Thank you. Like, thank you for your vulnerability. And it's like, now we go deeper. Now we get to enjoy this frequency that we ride. And I also find myself thinking, what if every therapist had those extra tools? Like, it's not that we need to necessarily ditch one set of tools for a whole new set of tools. But what if you, Roger, get to integrate what you learned from the medium with what you learned through your PhD, with what you've learned through your body's wisdom in experience showing up. It's like, of course, you take in other people. That that makes me think you're probably really good at what you do. That same gift is probably part of why you have a podcast called Radically Genuine. It's probably part of the the frequency of creating spaces that maybe are more open to talk about ideas that aren't mainstream. You know, I think this is a sign of an elevated consciousness. And um, in my experience, like my life is a series of synchronicities, for lack of a better word. And I actually am not attached to labels, but like literally yesterday I was doing some work at a coffee shop and there were two like beautiful, empowered, integrated men having a beautiful conversation about their lives in a real way. And we like dropped into a conversation together and it was of a certain frequency. And in that moment, we were all present. We were all in a non-judgmental awareness. And we decided to go out later the evening in the evening and just like have this conversation or this connection. And through those two men, I also received like really important wisdom that were answers to some of the questions I've been asking. And this is just my meaning making system. I'm actually not attached to anyone being like, oh, you know, I don't actually care about other people's judgment. It's like, it's like, this is true for me. And you can't explain these, like Julie met in Costa Rica. Um, and there was like a series of events that led to that and us finding kind of the perfect thing at the perfect time. And so on the on the advanced, let's call it advanced, I don't know, embodiment, such a cyclical journey, we're like beginners, and then we're advanced, and then we're beginners again. But I think the benefit of this deeper work is you open up to different ways of knowing and being and ultimately like living life. Think about how heavy trauma feels in the body. For me, doing like deep trauma healing 
it's it's created this like tension like true discomfort and it feels like the more that gets healed i literally get to be lighter life literally gets to be easier i meet people i'm no longer attracting uh men in my dating life that i feel like i need to fix or heal they're just like meeting me on a level because i am that you know and it's something that to me is a bit magical like how does this actually work like even these therapeutic philosophies like attachment theory and you know like there's there's these ways that we understand growth and evolution and i find that there's still an unexplainable magic underneath of what happens when we heal and elevate our consciousness frequency become lighter in our energy field we flow through life in a lighter way or at least the default is lighter